did we really think that it was going to be that easy for UCLA to just pack up and leave California for the Big Ten? Now, USC is a private institution. Obviously, that makes sense. They can do whatever they want to. However, UCLA is part of the UC system out in California. And it was not just a surprise to the rest of the country. The surprise of UCLA moving to the Big Ten was also a surprise for the UC Board of Regents. They had no idea that this was even happening. So, of course, there's been a lot of back and forth. Everybody remembers the governor, Gavin Newsom. He's a board member, of course. He's, uh, he, he talked a lot, I will say that. And yet, didn't even show up for yesterday's meetings. But regardless, we'll uh, we'll dive into this. This is over at the Mercury News. And uh, let's see. John Wilner, of course, Mr. Mister Know Everything about the Pac-12. He and John Canzano are great. Their new podcast, by the way, fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. The article says, Pac-12 survival. UC Board of Regents examines details of UCLA's pending departure indicates move could be overturned. Now, it says the open session at UCLA suggested the regents have unanswered questions. And there is a lot to to dive into on this. Um, it says, from UC Pre- uh, System President Michael Drake describing the impact report as an interim document to Regent John A. Perez noting that the meeting was, quote, a really good start to the conversation The governing body of the UC indicated it plans a deep dive into all aspects of UCLA's move, including its impact on Cal. There are a lot of questions here. What I'm I'm interested in is, one, are they going to allow UCLA to complete this move over to the Big Ten? If it doesn't happen, what happens to this Big Ten contract? Does it change anything, right? Was UCLA just an additional partner for USC or... Do they do they maybe take some of that money back? I'm really curious what's going to happen here. But this is this is interesting on a lot of different levels, right? Uh, the financial impact on Cal Berkeley, right? The Cal Golden Bears. The impact of the Pac-12 basically disintegrating is going to be huge. I, I don't think that Cal is going to make that much money. The initial... Initial reports that came out, I think Jason Shear over at Wildcat Authority uh, said over on 365 Sports that the initial offer from ESPN was $24.5 million annually per school. That's not great. But it's also not a ton less than what they were already making anyway. And so we'll see what the, now that we've got the Big Ten rights, we'll see what the Pac-12 rights bring in, etc. And that's going to be a big point of contention for this move being made. Uh as you dive deeper into this article, it says um, it says the Bruins' exit from the Pac-12 announced June 30th was surprising in many regards, including the manner by which UCLA was able to dodge bureau- uh, bureaucratic potholes and leave behind its sister campus in Berkeley. In response to an inquiry from the hotline, a spokesperson from the UC Office of the President explained at the time that there was no requirement for a decision from the University of California Board of Regents or the Office of the President. It says, uh, in other words, UCLA Chancellor Gene Block had the authority to act on his own. Now, it appears that that's not the case, based on a bunch of the comments. And I will tell you this. If you go back and read through and watch some of this, it is quite obvious that the majority of people that were involved in this have no idea about anything related to college athletics whatsoever. They've got no idea. However the points that they make are still good points, right? It it did seem strange to me and to everybody else, I think, that UCLA could just pick up and leave when they are part of the bigger UC system, right? That's just a a strange thing. Uh, On this, it says, for this particular matter, the regents could say, we want to act, and therefore we do not want the UC president or the campus chancellors to act in this area and simply assert that, Robinson said. Another key exchange came moments later when Perez, the former Speaker of the California State Assembly and a Cal graduate, asked Robinson about the mechanism required for withdrawing authority from a campus chancellor on matters of conference affiliation. Now, this is, it says, without noticing a meeting, without going to a meeting, between meetings, the board chair and the vice chair could act under interim action to retain an authority that had otherwise been delegated, and Robinson said that is correct. Now, it goes back and forth about policy changes 
et cetera. But it all looks as the the regents could overturn this decision. Like they they really could go to UCLA and force them to remain in the Pac-12. And another option would be to let them go to the Big Ten, but part of their payment from the Big Ten would have to go and subsidize Cal. That's a massive, massive deal. Like if UCLA, I, I guess for UCLA, you would have to look and see what the better option would be. All the travel, everything involved with the Big Ten, do you go and do that and have a large chunk of your payments taken out to go back to Cal? What do the other Pac-12 teams think about Cal getting subsidized, but nobody else? I mean, it's it's just a, this is a huge deal. Nobody really seems to be paying attention to it, but it is something to really, really pay attention to because that's that's going to change how this media rights deal ends up working out, what ends up happening to the Pac-12, expansion for other conferences, etc. This is a massive, massive situation. So I want to know what ends up happening here, uh, and I'm sure that you do as well. Thanks for listening to Winning Cures Everything. Make sure and subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app, and make sure to leave a nice five-star review. You can follow Gary on Twitter, at GaryWCE. And the show is at Winning Cures. Be sure to check out the merch in our web store and share the show.